Today's scripture reading is taken from Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works which God prepared before that we shall walk in them. Here ends, here ends the reading of God's holy words. We are happy to have today for the first time, not speaking here for the first time, but in the capacity that he comes. The speaker seated in the chair was born in Ghana on the motherland, the cradle of civilization. I'm talking about Africa, the cradle of civilization, Africa. He has served in many administrative positions as a district pastor of over 17 churches to the executive secretary, to the president of the conference in Ghana, managing also the book and Bible house for the entire country, and also at the division level, before he decided to leave the place, the cradle of civilization, Africa, to continue his studies. And that is how he ended up here, because he left Ghana with the master's degree in religion to pursue the doctoral degree and ended up in Quebec. He will tell you more about that when he stand up here to preach. He ended up here in Quebec. And of course, he has fulfilled the goal of completing the doctoral degree in ministry. And so... We call him Pastor Adu, but he's also Dr. Adu. He's married for the last, how, how long is it again? 30, 38 years. And the union has produced five children and six grandchildren. His wife is here. Sister Adu, could you stand? You have been with him through journeys. Because a pastor's oftentimes journey, and the wives normally journey with them wherever they want to go. The wives normally make that sacrifice, sometimes giving up their profession just to be with their husbands in ministry. Thank you, Sister Ado, for standing by the man because it is often said and it is true that behind every success, beside every successful man there is a successful woman amen? amen and so Dr. Kwasi Ansa Ado will be our guest speaker he is a father pastor but more than all of that he loves God and God's people I present him to you he was born on Sunday. Everyone who comes from Ghana with the name Kwasi was born on a Sunday. So he was born on a Sunday. Kwasi Ansa Adu was born on a Sunday. God's mouthpiece, God's messenger, pray that the Lord will use him today to bring a message of hope and consolation for God's people. But before he comes, the men's praise team will lead us into singing, there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. So I present the president of the Quebec Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Pastor Adoho. There. 
Jesus, sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the seated to your right first shake the hand and say my brother or sister may the Lord richly bless you so shake a hand smile for throughout the week somebody has not smiled the whole week because we have problems you know so smile and shake a hand good now you do the same thing to the one to your left and say God bless you while you smile to the one Amen. Yes, I'm so happy. I'm pleased to be here once again. I think this is the second time that I'm preaching here in Westmount. I bring you greetings from Trois Rivières. I was there um, last week, and uh, the whole um, three, uh, the zonal churches met. And for the first time, I saw that beautiful city of Trois Rivières. And uh, they say hello to you here. I want to also once again welcome all visitors again. We are so proud to see you visit us, and especially to the parents who dedicated their children. We are so proud to have you here. And you know, just as we were praying for you, uh, any time I dedicate babies and the members are not in the church, and they say, we want our children to know Christ, I will tell them, would you want to know Christ first? So your children will learn from you because experience is the best teacher. So we teach by experience, by your example, and um, we pray that you would be frequenting here with your child and you yourselves would invite Christ into your hearts. Uh, I know you might have invited him already, but continue the journey till he comes. Hallelujah. What I'll be saying is on the screen. You'll be seeing them on the screen. So please watch carefully. Sometimes you'll be reading with me. And just take whatever comes. Shackles broken. Thank you, Pastor. That's my senior man. I always call him uh, my boss. If you are the pastor of uh, a big church like this, uh, yeah, so I call him Bishop. <laughs> yeah, the Bishop of, uh, yes, of the English sector. And uh, I thank you so much for inviting me. I want to thank Sister Denison. Uh, she was the one who said, Pastor, you have to be here. And uh, she was praying and, in, you know, she, she is a lady of faith. Because I had a program this weekend in Abeta. And um, we kept praying about it. 
And uh, at the end, I said, sister, I have to cancel the Abeda, you know, journey and be here today. So I'm so happy. Uh, I want to thank the elders, the head elder who is by me very active and uh, directing me to know what to do. Uh, wonderful. And all the team and the entire church membership. Today, before, I think my wife has been introduced already. Uh, so I need to um, introduce her again. Uh, we've journeyed all through the years and I praise God for her. When I'm always out as an administrator flying around the world, even when I was in Africa, I was coming to Canada. So before I came here, I had three passports full uh, that I didn't want to fly, fly any longer. And she was the one who take, took care of all the five children. And by God's grace, we have six grand, and the seventh one is on the way. So the Lord is blessing us with population, <laughs> and we're praying that these kids will fear the Lord and continue in the same spirit. So we thank you for coming today. We have a letter to share today. Shackles broken. What are shackles? In the ancient times when they caught a prisoner, and as I speak, I'm, I want to refer you to the New Testament times. Paul will say, I am your fellow, you know, brother in chains. Shackle is a strong metal that is fixed to the hands or to the feet of a prisoner so he can break away and run away. In the days, those days, it was a cruel type of metal. It wasn't smooth. And today I'm going to talk you, to, to tell you about shackles broken. But before I do that, I have a visitor. We have a visitor here that nobody knows. I want to introduce him first, then I'll go to my sermon. I want to introduce you to a great friend. This friend, when I was a child, he knew me. He helped me a lot when I went to secondary school. He followed me to the university. When I came to the U.S. to continue, he was there. And today he's here to encourage me. He has loved me so much. He loves my children and he provides for me daily. You want to know that friend here who is seated? I want to call his name. My friend's name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He broke my shackles of sin. I was born in a small village. No car came to that village. I had to walk about 10 miles if you want to go to the market. And it is through this friend that today you find me here. I have had a terrible accident before with my wife. My wife was pronounced dead at the accident. And when I saw my wife being carried with the arms and head thrown apart, I had no hope. I was also in the accident, so I was in another ward, she was in another ward, and she didn't know I was alive. I didn't know she was alive. And today, here, here am I moving. My friend helped me. I want to recommend that friend to West Mount Church, to every visitor here. I want to tell you, my friend is a very good friend. He loves you when you are black. He loves you when you are white. He loves you when you are Chinese. He loves you when you, came, or you, 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 come, you come from Guyana or from Jamaica. He loves everybody alike, whether you are short or tall. When people hate you, He's there for you. When you have no funds, he's there to keep you. This friend is the one I want to give testimony about today. Listen carefully because he's here. He's here in spirit. The one who is representing him is called the Holy Spirit. And if you invite him in, you'll be a brand new person. He has done it for me. And he will do it for you. I am called president not by my might. He called me when I was very young. At the age of 20, I was already preaching on the streets, winning souls and bringing them to the church. I will go to the pastor and we send the souls. We had a youth team and I was the speaker. 
So I was a pastor before going to learn to be a pastor. My friend taught me. He's very good. Maybe you don't know him well. Today I want to introduce him again to you. Sin is the shackles of this world. Sin is the reason why there is chaos in this world. Sin is the reason why some people are too poor and some are too rich. You know that some people earn about 1.5 million a month? 1.5 million. And some people struggle to pay their rent. If we listen to my friend called Jesus and had the world known him, there wouldn't be so much abject poverty even in the world today. Because the rich will be sharing love. And the poor will be working hard and we will be together. There wouldn't be any racial differences and we will be the same. But I want to tell you, he has a place for you. And in heaven, whatever I'm saying is going to come true. There will be no credit cards and no debit cards. No banks in heaven. Because the streets are gold of gold. So what do you need gold for in heaven? And we will not eat. You just pick something you put in your mouth just for the taste. And you will live forevermore. What a sorrow to see your mother die. My mom died three years ago. Even though I knew she was growing old, I never expected my dear mom to die. This is the sadness, the chaos of this world. Have you ever experienced the death of a sister? Oh, a brother. So if somebody tells you, I have solution for death, then I think that guy is your friend. He's an eternal friend. Listen to him, walk with him, and you will be free indeed. Hallelujah. Shackles broken. Now, so this is a picture of shackles. You see the Bible. And this is a freed person. And I am Kwesi who is freed by his grace. When you come to Ghana, where I come from, there is a powerful goddess that has some supernatural powers like the voodoos and etc. And my fathers were the warriors of Ghana in the ancient times. I am supposed to be a chief as I'm speaking, but those, that chieftaincy has some voodoo around. My daddy had to make a choice between serving the gods of Satan yes. or coming to Jesus. By the grace of God, my father was pulled out and he abandoned the stool, the chieftaincy or the kinship of the tribe and said, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And I'm one of the products of the exodus of my father from this sort of pagan worship and started a small church called Seventh-day Adventist Church in the forest where even cars could not make it. So we had to walk miles to the market. And my father went for a Seventh-day Adventist teacher and paid him from his pocket to take care of the children in the village because there was no school. My father had a dream. And it is through his vision and my mom's vision that I could stand here today to preach. But I praise my friend Jesus Christ for inviting my dad and mom. So when I was eating in the house, it was Adventist music. I sing and I love the Bible from my childhood. Shackles broken for a young guy speaking. Today, I see myself as growing because when I was a child, I never thought I'd be old. But as I got to 60, I understand that we are all passing away very soon. I'm not as strong as before. 
we will have our lunch today, but I can't eat much. Not because I'm too old, but because the graph is falling gradually. We have short days to live here. Whether you like it or not, live up to 100 years, you will die. But I introduce you to a savior who breaks shackles. That savior has life. Trust him today because whether you like it or not, by 30 years, most of us are gone already. I am 60 plus, and if the Lord blesses me, I could get to 80 or 90. But whether 80 or 90 is not the matter. I have a home prepared for me. And that is what we should focus on. So get serious, brothers and sisters. And let's go ahead. Because of time, I'll be moving fast. So watch and listen. Shall we read again what our dear boy read? Let's read. For by grace you have been saved through faith. I want to be sure you are reading. Okay, let's begin. Go. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for your participation. The fact, when you see yellow, it means I'm introducing a subtopic. Christ knew the human problems, and the problem is simple. We are shackled by sin. Wise men of this world don't accept this concept. They have many theories, and we'll come to that. I've picked one or two. But the chaos in this world is only sin. But what I'm saying is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those of us who are in the Lord, it is power. It is something that will energize us if we can overcome sin. The problem is that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 says it. So, the problem of this world is sin. The only one who has the right prognosis is Jesus Christ our Lord. Because he created us and he knows us from inside out. Some wise people dispute that sin is the problem of the world. For them, mankind can solve the problem of this world. But I want to tell you today... There is only one name under heaven that can solve the problem of this world. When I was young and I read about the United States of America, I thought nothing can shake a nation like United States of America. I studied in America and I came to Canada. And I don't envy to stay in anywhere in the world because there is only one place that is safe. And that place is heaven. No place I have preached in London, preached in Germany. Whilst in our, I was in Africa, I was moving around the world, being called to many places to speak. And I want to tell you, people in Ghana die. The same death is in Canada, is it? Jamaicans die, Caucasians die. Sicknesses that are in Ghana, we have multiples here. People are poorer in Ghana, but when it comes to diseases, we have a lot also here. In spite of all the hospitals, there is only one place I recommend to you, eternity in heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. He gave all. How did Christ break the shackles? He gave everything. And how do you see it? When I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince 
some glory done. My riches gain, I count, but loss, I pour contempt on all my pride. Sometimes I move around and those who know me closely will say, Doctor. And I say, Doctor, it's necessary for this world for some of the things. But as I was reading further and further, I realized the more you read, the more you realize you are ignorant. Because I went to one library and I was only at a small corner writing my thesis. Then I asked myself, what about all these books? like a city around me that I don't know about. So if I'm doctor in the book of Luke, what about the book of Romans and the Revelation? I pour contempt on all my pride. When I survey that a doctor of doctors descending from heaven and came to become man, who am I to boast? I recommend this man to you. He has done a lot. This scripture I like so much as we continue. It says, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love in this. And I think you can continue. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Hallelujah. If you, are, you have something, maybe somebody would dare to die for you. But what about sinners? Dying for a criminal? I would never do that. I will never attempt to save a criminal who is killing people on the streets. We will pray that he's in, he gets to prison. Yes. But Christ died for these criminals and died for us as well. Yes. What a God. What a love. I recommend his spirit to you. Amen. And it will help you. Let me give you a short story. It happened in Montreal. An old man was carrying has, you know, uh, how do you say, he was uh, pushing or pulling this baby cart, um, this cart, carriage with the baby and crossing one of the highways. It was on the news about three or four years. I don't remember the name, but it happened here in Montreal. And then in the middle of the road, it was a busy road, the old man realized he has miscalculated the grandchild in a carriage and he saw this vehicle coming and the vehicle was going to crash the two of them. What did the old man think about? He looked at the child and maybe considered in his mind, I am old already, maybe 60 plus, but this child has some years to live. You know what the old man did? He pushed the card ahead and stood. Lord, save this baby. I'm ready to give my life. The vehicle crushed the old man. We have a God. This man did this because he sees something good from this kid. But Jesus Christ's death is different. He sees no good in ourselves. Nothing. So it was not like a grandpa like myself. If I have a grandbaby, I have six of them. And if I pick any of them, how proud I feel. I may be ready to die for them because I'm growing old. But Jesus Christ will not die because you are a grandchild. Or because you look handsome or beautiful. This is a man. Follow him and you shall be free indeed. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe sincerely in him will not perish. We know this already. But let me tell you something. 
any rose that you find so beautiful has some thorns around it. You understand? So the devil is around. Why is the devil so angry? Let's read this. The devil is like a lion that is seeking everyone to tear apart. But do you see the devil physically? No. How does the devil work? He works on the mind. He works on the value systems of, Ga- of Canada. You know why people are leaving the church in Canada? The more comfortable you become, the more you feel you don't need anybody. Right? So when you see the developing world losing Christians from the churches, it's because in the developed world there is food. There is too much in a refrigerator that fasting is no longer necessary for us. When you are ill, you even don't think of praying for a miracle because there is 911. You dial and you are okay. They take you to the hospital and you don't pay physical cash. So the more a society becomes affluent, the more we forget the God who blessed us to be affluent. That is a paradox. There was war in heaven, and when Satan fell, he is angry. Angry. Everyone here is angry at you and at me. And what is the medium with which this struggle continues? The mind. He controls it. So when the Bible says the devil is like a lion, The devil wants to change your thinking. So you no longer have any faith in Christ. You no longer focus on spiritual things. But you think about what you want here. Period. When you see people walking to church. This morning I was so impressed. But there are people who may even come maybe some 10 minutes to close. We are relaxed. Isn't it? Most of them. Relaxed. Many don't care. Why? Because the theater of the struggle is the mind. And especially in the West, what has happened is that our affluence and our schooling and our whatever, in the classroom, the textbooks, everything has been changed. Especially when it comes to God. You can teach anything in a school, but you can't mention God in a classroom. And this is why society is in trouble. Who controls the world today? Let's continue. Satan's strategy is cleverly devised fables instead of the cross to capture us. And let me tell you, many people in our churches don't see it, but subtly the devil is working. But the good news is that the spirit of God even abounds more superfluously if by humility we shall know ourselves and cry to the Lord for help. So by the end of this sermon, you will make a choice. For the world, they said the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. So, in the last days, Societies like Canada, United States, all over the world will turn from the truth of the Bible and will go to people we call philosophers and wise people for their cleverly devised fables. And this is what would sink societies gradually. So in spite of all the aeroplanes and the rockets and etc., you are afraid to fly from Canada to the United States of America. You are afraid to be in a supermarket because one terrorist could enter and you never know. 
Always I say prayer for people, I mean for us, as we run through the metros and the buses, that no crazy person will pick a pistol. And it is my prayer. And every day pray for this world that the children of God will stand up and be looking up for there is nothing extraordinarily good here. I have lived in Africa, lived a little bit in Europe, lived in the United States for at least three years and Canada for 10 years. There is only one place I recommend, heaven. Period. It is a little better here. We have food, we have law and order. It's good. But it is nothing compared to heaven that we mentioned. May the Lord bless you today. Hallelujah. Now, where are some of these clever fables found? Let's look at Charles Darwin. This is Darwin. Charles Darwin, born in 1809 to 1882, he was doing his biological studies and came with some conclusions. After his death, his conclusions have been blown out of proportion to a point that they are attributed so many things to Charles that he didn't say. And look at what I have on the screen. What do you see? Monkey becomes an ape. And then the ape, according to Darwinism, became a human being. Then you ask, where is the link between the human being and the ape? So you see the artist, something is missing. So out of the blue, human beings came. And we came from apes. Nobody created us according to these cleverly devised fables. Now listen carefully. When you take your child to school, no textbook in Canada, except maybe in the Seventh-day Adventist school and some Christian schools, will they teach that God created the world. So let me advise Seventh-day Adventists and visitors who are here. If you want your child to learn about the Creator, bring your child every day to church. Amen? This is the school for your child. We will go to the public school, all right, but it is not permitted to even teach creation in any classroom except Christian private schools like Griefs Academy. So send your child there. We are not perfect, but it is better. It's better than what is in the world. Sciences are okay. We need them to survive. Mathematics is okay. But when it comes to religion, God is out of the textbooks in Western world. And we understand what is happening today. We glorify anything. We glorify human beings. I was checking the most popular people on tweets. Who have a, what tweet? Twitter account? Twitter account. And normal, I think number three is Justin Bieber is number two or thing. And people, about 70 million people following this young guy from Canada. But you want to find those who follow Jesus with that passion. Even in the church, it is hard. And what does Justin Bieber tweet? I'm going to the bathroom. I'm going to take my bath to go. And then people, oh, whoa, Justin is going to the bathroom. <laughs> After that, I will be in California. Wow! Just me. When we have the truth, we are sleeping even in church sometimes. I hear you, preacher. And we don't care. <clears throat> Relaxed. Today, may the Lord touch our hearts. Hallelujah. Yes. So these fables, now what do you see here? You see the eye? When Charles Darwin did all the experiment and he was about to die, he said, in spite of all my wisdom and the fact that I think that things evolved and they were not created, the eye amazes me. How can an eye with such a complex phenomena evolve from a tree or from a rock? This is what he wrote. 
the thought of the eye, how it could be possibly be produced by natural selection makes me ill. So the eye even confounded the wisest man. But what about the brain? The brain. And what about the veins and the tissues in humanity? So you see the wisdom of mankind? Foolishness. But the cross, which is foolishness to them, is the power of wisdom. Believe that and you'll be free indeed. Jean-Paul Sartre is another philosopher. He's a recent one and you'll find the, the date there. He says, sin is not a problem. The problem for mankind is that we are free to do whatever we want to do and be free, but we are restricting ourselves. Christians are even restricting us, telling us there's something called sin. Just live any life that you want. If you're a man, you want to marry a man, you are free. If you want to kill, kill, you are free. It is only your mind that tells you you are not free to do it. That is what this guy said. And this is the product or this is the basis for what we call existentialism. Just consider what is here. What is there, forget about it. Free to do anything. And this is what has influenced developed nations and children are being trained gradually by this wisely crafted fables that now we go to 1 Corinthians 1.18 for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. A day will come that there will be an announcement on the radio that something is happening that has never happened in the atmosphere. And people will say it is the eclipse of the moon. And others will argue, no, it's the eclipse of the sun. And this world will begin shaking. And darkness will be falling. And then our son, the son of man, will appear in the clouds. Blessed are those who can raise their eyes to meet him in the clouds. Nobody here in this church shall be lost unless you choose to be lost. Your shackles have been broken on the cross. And all you need is to claim that by faith today. Hallelujah. I have a God. Who never fails anybody who wants to be saved. I recommend him to you. I recommend my friend Jesus Christ to you and you'll be free. Jesus is knocking as I'm speaking. He's knocking at your heart. Now look at this picture. We don't see Jesus face to face. But as I speak, I have been in crusades where I see people who have all their money They have all the intelligence and yet they will humble themselves and embrace Jesus Christ. I recommend this man to you. Are you so proud that you feel you know better than the Bible? So big that you know everything that you cannot be humble? This is the problem of humanity. Look at what Christ says. Read. He says, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Is this good news? Good news of salvation. I will never drive you away. Claim this promise. And you'll be free indeed. You look, see, 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 see this man. He doesn't only come to church. But he writes down the scriptures. Goes back home. Reflect on them and digest them. Our Lord is so good, he's like a parent, right? A parent. And those of you who are parents, you understand. My wife is a very quiet lady, but she's very disciplined at home. And when we were training our children, I was traveling around, she's the one disciplining them. And one of my daughters met me when I returned. Because daddy is always traveling, they always love me because I don't give them much instruction like mama. Mama will say, sweep the floor, wash the place, do the dishes. So my daughter came and said, daddy, you know what? I love you so much. 
but I don't have the same love for mama. And I said, why? He said, mama, instructions, instruction, instruction. Sweep the floor, clean the bowls. We, we always be awake. And he will never, she never, I looked at her, I said, oh, my daughter, how stupid you are. And she was surprised that I insulted her. And I said, you know what? Mommy is the one who loves you. So, said, daddy, really? No. Those of you who are mothers, you understand what I mean. One day, one of my children wrote a letter. And I think mommy was, have, I mean, had tears. Dear mama, we praise God for you. Amen. You taught us how to do, to work at home. How to cook ourselves and how to stand up for everything. You never played and toyed with us. Your discipline is what has brought us here. I couldn't bring all my children here. I brought only two of them. Three are back home. The girl is doing, has finished her master's. She's planning for PhD. The boy planning for PhD. So now they call us and they say, Pastors, you were moving like anything. But we had discipline and Christ at home. And we thank you. So me and mom, we said, even if we don't get anything, we are happy. If you lack wisdom, go to Jesus Christ. He gives it freely. Let, let, let me give you an illustration. What do you get when you have so much problem in your heart against a friend? Let's say somebody offends you. And you are so mad that you cannot forgive that person. Are you a free person? Let's assume, let's assume that you come into church and you met that person you don't like. And only two of you are meeting. And uh, what happens? There is some electricity happening, right? And you don't see like going back or going forward. There is wisdom in the words of Christ saying, forgive and you'll be free. And if you don't know how to forgive, I'll show you. From church, if there is somebody who has really worried you and you cannot be on good terms with the person, write the name when you go home. Kneel down and confront Jesus. Jesus, have mercy upon me. I hate this or I have bitterness or I have this, I have this. Help me forgive her. And when you finish, add that Christ, I am also a sinner, so forgive me also because I might have also offended somebody and have the courage to meet the person or call the person. You will sleep that day and you'll be free. You shall know the truth and the truth will do what? Shall set you free. Free. So we get into the end because of time. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. What a good news. So this is the person I trust in life. You know what? I have a lot of problems being president. It's not easy. And I've been there many years. Only I rested for 10 years here. And I was surprised that they called me again. It is not easy to handle many multiple problems. But if you should ask my wife, she will tell you, I sleep peacefully. I say what the Lord inspires me to tell you. To, if I offend you, I will say sorry. But I'm not afraid of anything that is the truth. And I sleep soundly and wake up soundly, pick my bag and go to work. Because my father, I'm in my father's hands. And nobody can snatch me out of his hand. So I'm free. Let me advise you. If you want to sleep well, know Jesus. Know your problems are his. Your burden he will take away. Remember that we are all going to die anyway. All those who bought houses for 10 million... Maybe I cannot afford even 300,000. 
but we all sleep on one bed, right? And we have one mattress each. And they're very super rich. They sleep at a corner of the bed, not the whole bed, right? And even the, on the house with, with 10 bedrooms, you sleep in only one, and it has a corner where the bed is, and even on a bed, you sleep at an angle and not the whole bed. This is mankind. And when we all die, by three days, we are rotten. And some of us are cremated. This is life. I introduce you to the savior of this world. His name is Jesus Christ. He never fails. And he's faithful when he promises that I'm coming again for you. Live right and you shall be free. Put all your soul into Christ. Learn of him, taste of him, and act like him. The spirit will fill you and energize you. And you shall be free and you'll be saved. And that day will come, really. Whether you believe it or not. Look at this young man. He attended a meeting. And he cried. And all that I'm showing you, it is not exact people, but I have seen them happen. I had a crusade. A rich man came crying. He said, now I realize that all I have is nothing. Lord, have mercy. And crying like a baby for mercy. And I was young at that time. I baptized him. And now he became a brand new person, sharing the wealth that he has. Riches is not bad. But when the Lord blesses you with riches, share so the poor will have an advantage. Praise the Lord for that. Brothers and sisters, finally. Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or past praiseworthy, focus, think about these things. If you have a wife, think about how do I make my wife happy? If you have a husband, say, what do I do so my family will be happy? And if you are in a church, think of raising somebody who is down. Yes. Hold somebody's hand. Be a counselor to the one who is suffering. The one who feels depressed, sit close by him or her. If you are close enough, and open up and encourage the person. These are what Philippians 4, 8 is telling us. When somebody offends you, remember you have also offended somebody before. Remember you also gossiped before. Nobody heard your gossip, but Jesus heard you were gossiping. So never mention the name as the gossiper, the only gossiper in the community. Pray for her or him and pray for your own sins. Break your shackles through Jesus Christ. I present a living savior. A savior who never fails anybody who comes to him. A savior that is worried because the world is running away. And the devil is capturing minds and souls. May the Lord have mercy. Now look at this picture. Do you like it? One day, spiritually, some will be clothed like this. And it is my prayer that none of my children will miss this. And my wife will be with me. And that you will be there. But you see, the journey to heaven is not great. Confess, kneel down in your own house at your freedom. Or bow and confess your heart to God and say, Lord, make me serious. Some of us are joking. I serve a living God and he is alive and he's coming again. Be serious, not because of your works, but by faith, believe that the Savior is alive. I was born five years, my father became a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm not proud of anything, but I'm proud of the one who will surrender your heart, first of all, to Jesus Christ, our Savior. Don't boast about the Sabbath alone. 
Don't boast because you don't have ornaments on. Yes, they are good. Don't boast because I dress like this and I have a tie on. Who am I except I surrender humbly to Jesus Christ, our Savior? Be humble. Your wisdom will perish at the age of 80, 85, 100. Everybody will die. But I introduce you and give you the good news. I have a savior who will not fail any young lady in this church. I have a savior who will hold the hands of the young men here. I love you young people. Be strong. Don't allow this world to deceive you. Focus on Jesus. How do you focus on him? Listen to his words. Think about that which is good. If you're a girl and you are dressing, dress well. Dress not to attract men to yourself. You are fooling yourself. Look up to Jesus. If you're a man, love your wife. 38 years, this is my wife. And I love her than any woman in this world. And how do I love her for 38 years? I don't think about any other lady, whether you are Miss Canada or anything. If I'm driving, I drive straight. So I have no problem with the lady who is shaking the leg. I don't see that. I know only one woman. Men, be serious. Be proud about your wives. Supply the needs of the family. Men were created to be noble and honorable. A man should work hard and take care of your family. When a man is lazy, you disgrace God because you represent and you are the head of the family. We don't use our mouth to declare that we are men. Your actions and how you provide tells your children you are a serious father. Be serious Christians. I have a God who saves. And that God called you. Whatever your situation is today, he is ready for you. Whatever is good and pure. Focus on them. Pray about them. Study about them. Come to church. Bring your friends. Visitors, I have Jesus for you. None of us will be, will, of you will be lost unless you are not humble to bow and say, Lord, have mercy. May the Lord bless this church and bless this conference for we have a serious business ahead of us. Heaven is no joke, but we go by faith, not by money, nor by intellect, or by doctorate, we go by the heart. Amen? Amen. May the Lord have mercy on us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the word, preacher. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. Because he lives, because he lives, I can fail tomorrow. Because Jesus lives, because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby. Feel the pride 
Because, because he lives, all fear is, is gone. gone. Because I know. Because, because I know. Because I know. He holds the future. And life is worth the living just because. because one more time. Church, sing because he lives. Because he lives, I can face. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. As we end with a benediction, if you want to have a special relationship, renew your relationship with Jesus, just walk to the aisle and for a special prayer. If you are depressed and you want to see the power of God in your life, just come forward if you want. Anybody who thinks that I want to redo my life, feel free. Walk to the aisles as we say the last prayer. And the Lord will pray. Or you can put up your hand. The Lord knows you. And then when I start praying, you put it down. So if there is anybody who wants Christ specially in a way, put up your hand. Let me see. Just do this. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And those of you who will be in heaven where we will meet again. You will meet me. You will see my spouse and my children. Please, anybody who wants to be there, please put out. Just do this. Hallelujah. May our Savior and empty graves proves that he's living today. Hallelujah. And he, will ha he has a place for us. Now, as I pray, let me tell you one word, last word. When we are living here, start smiling. Hallelujah. Start asking the Lord for some cheerful spirit in you. Never think you are alone. You have somebody who cares for you. He never forgets you. And nobody can snatch you off it out of his hand. All you need is faith and humility. And practice what you hear. May the Lord bless you. Shall we say the benediction? Is it all right? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May Jesus hold your hand and grant you peace. May your shackles be broken today by the Savior Jesus Christ. May the Lord touch your heart and change it and make it new. So you have a new focus and a new thinking. May you be thinking about spiritual things instead of only thinking about this world. May whatever you pursue in life bring prosperity both physically and spiritually. May the Lord be with your family. And if you are single, may the Lord support you and hold you up. If you are depressed, may the Lord bring you up again. And if you are sick, may the Holy Spirit touch you and heal you. May the Lord shine upon each one of us. May his name, O God, be praised forever and evermore. Amen.